I'm Mike Olson. <laughs>
a meeting point or a conflict to kind of refer back to. It really was no holds barred. We just looked at a bunch of visual themes that different people in the team were interested in. Animals, patterns, camouflage, flags. We knew we wanted to look into some 3D scanning because that was something we were really into pushing at the time. There was even Dutch still life paintings from the classical era as reference. The question was, could we create something that was vaguely coherent? Combining those themes, those visual elements, animals, patterns, camouflage, looking into how if we pose them as Dutch still lives in a classical painting style, what kind of looks would we get? Got a French bulldog wearing a mask. Pushing even further into that really kind of painterly effect. Again, the animals, the still lives. We started getting somewhere with the cloth. We liked the idea that the cloth was a mask, also something we could lay a pattern on, and it concealed the animals in a kind of interesting way, gave them a personality. We looked into the idea that the patterns could be animated on the animals and then creating repeat patterns that are separate from the animals but made up of the parts of the animals. Maybe even classical patterns that we take into a 3D world. Or do we draw the patterns on the animals, paint them on like war paint with this versus theme? Hand painted, of course. It felt like every animal in our cast needed a war banner, a flag for its clan to attach to, so we designed those. And there's the owl banner from the owl clan. Selecting the final cast was a very meticulous process of whatever they had at the local taxidermy store. So, we ended up with a fox, an iguana, an owl, a butterfly, and an armadillo. And a crab, we had a crab as well. And the animals we borrowed, we went ahead and 3D scanned. Some of them, especially the feathered creatures, were a lot more tricky, needed a higher end approach, whilst others we could do on our small tabletop setup in our studio, an armadillo. You get all the hard surfaces, you don't get all the kind of soft and the, the kind of fur hair surfaces, so they need to be added later. We started to find something that started to look like we wanted it to, a darker space, a moodier space, but still with that slightly kind of painterly feel to it. Ridiculous levels of detail. It was in the hairs on the ears of this armadillo. And we wanted this crescendo, a visual crescendo, and that's where the Dutch classical painting came in. We referenced Van Dyck's Samson and Delilah. On the left there, you can see our sketch up of how this kind of crescendo moment would happen versus Samson and Delilah by Van Dyck. Even the unwrapped textures that you get out of 3D when you scan these animals, became a visual reference point. You've got the more natural looking diffuse map on the left there, but just that iridescent look of the normals map, it just felt interesting along side by side. So at the last minute, we threw in some noodles in that iridescent color palette. This is what came out the other end. Fender approached us to create a campaign for the launch of their new guitar, the Acoustasonic Jazzmaster. It was a fusion of two guitars, acoustic and electric. So, the brief was literally a few words. The Sonic Shapeshifter. But the real question was, can this approach translate to the commercial world, to real briefs? But we found it does. And pretty well, actually.
So that was a recent job for Fender. They came to us with a few words. There was no brief, no script. The Acoustasonic Jazzmaster, a fusion of acoustic and electric. The words they gave us were the Sonic Shapeshifter and they said, go ahead and do your thing. And that's how we got there. And it's definitely a way of working. Visual first, see where you get. It's kind of more like working with clay than working with hard materials like metals and woods. It's, you feel your way and uh, you start to get somewhere and everything else kind of flows off the back of that. And it feeds into this ideal we had that we wanted to be a visual R&D studio who did meet the deadline and got paid. No one is above eye candy, not even the biggest brands in the world. But it's also great when clients want to mix it up with a combination of techniques, 2D, 3D, photography, live action. And that's exactly what Spotify wanted with their new campaign, Listening is Everything. And that really deserved an everything approach from both an audio and a visual standpoint. Possibly the epitome of this approach is the Air Max film we did for Nike. That thing is just an audio-visual feast. We actually stole the approach from ourselves. We were creating all these R&D process reels. When we'd finish a project, we'd bundle everything up into a nice little edit and put it on our website, and it was kind of closure. All that exploration was worthwhile, even the stuff that didn't make the final film. But we found that these process reels, they were getting as much interest on our channels as the final films themselves. So we said to Nike, hey, why don't we use this format to make a film? A polished process reel, if you like. All we do is visually explore a day in the life of an Air Max shoe. Let's just take a minute to talk about the unsung hero, the audio. Without the audio, these films would just be a silent bunch of frames back to back, but audio ties it together. It creates a tactile, charming, playful, or dramatic experience. I can't tell you how important it is, and we are so thankful to our audio partners for making us look really good all the time. And letting craft lead the way isn't restricted to just CG or motion graphics or animation. We also found that Applying this to live action has led to some really interesting camera techniques that we've gone on to use in Film 4, for example. We found this celluloid film strip technique where we pass through the same space over and over and it gives a really interesting result. So that started out with a camera move we developed and the test you're looking at now is basically a camera phone on a skateboard sliding between two speakers and it slides through once and then we tile them up over and over again to create this celluloid film strip effect. We're always creating these visual techniques as I say, sometimes it's 2D, sometimes it's 3D and sometimes it's with live action. So with this one we were just waiting for that right opportunity to come along. So when the brief came in, we recreated that test in After Effects by just mapping some imagery into a space. But to show how this technique could host stop frame animation, it could have live action, it could have multiple mediums working at once, and it just captured this feel of the celluloid film strip, but in a kind of contemporary way. We won the job, so then we had to make it. The toys got bigger. We went on location in California. We built sets in the UK. We used as many traditional film craft techniques as we possibly could. It was a film channel after all, and that was our internal mantra. Let's make a film channel, not a TV channel. We even burnt the set. Where the overthinking came in was what was in these worlds. We had the structure, we had the technique. That was locked in, the client loved it. And even though CG and visual effects is one of our main tools, we were lucky enough to use pure analog techniques with this, using traditional film craft wherever possible. Even if it was more expensive, we'd puppet a light fitting or slam a door open by hand. 
So each of the six idents has three possible endings and you don't know which one you're going to until you get there. So in the corridor ident alone, you've got references to Ghostbusters for the trolley. The corridor and the room numbers are from The Shining. The gravity is from Inception, the camera's from Poseidon Adventure, the exact paint colours from Grand Budapest Hotel, the shoes from Barton Fink, the doors, Poltergeist, and the fire, Backdraft of course. So this is just a culmination of what we love to do. On the surface, it's essentially eye candy. It's got an instant gratification, and that's really, really important. But if you want to delve deeper and keep looking and keep watching, you will find that there is meaning in there. But the craft is as important as the concept. I'm going to leave you guys with a little making of film that shows the fun we had on that Film 4 project. We're really fortunate we get to work with clients who support this model and come on this journey with us. It's not about staying in one lane, it's finding the right lane for the job, or the right two lanes. It's thinking, it's making, it's making, it's thinking. But as long as you get a great result in the end, there is no right approach or right process. You just gotta get there. So we'll be over here, thinking and making, and making and thinking for a long time yet. Hope you are too.